Hello and welcome to Coral Gables Television Studios. I'm Brianna Moles. We invite you to join us on this special Wild Things themed edition of Coffee Talk, your source for the latest news in Coral Gables and South Florida. Joining us today is Lindsay Horde, the Crocodile Response Coordinator for the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lindsay. My pleasure. We wanted to have you on today because we recently had a crocodile incident in Coral Gables, as I'm sure you are very aware of. Um, so we wanted to have you on to sort of talk to people about uh, crocodile safety and how to prevent uh, situations like this from happening. Um, so first, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at the commission? Well, my, one of my responsibilities is the, the state's crocodile response quarter, which basically means I, I address people's concerns about crocodiles. Obviously, people that have lived in Florida their whole lives are aware that they're very prevalent crocodiles and alligators for that matter. Um, but do you think that most people, even having lived here for several years, might not have actually had a face-to-face -face encounter? Or do you find that most longtime residents have seen one face-to-face? -face? Uh, the crocodile, American crocodile, which is the species that we're talking about, uh, was one of the most critically endangered species in Florida three decades ago. In fact, it was placed on the endangered species list. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, I mean, at that time, there were two to three hundred crocodiles in Florida. Wow. Uh, since then, the, uh, the, the species has made a significant recovery, and now our estimated population is around 2,000 non-hatchlings. So that means that we're seeing crocodiles now in places where they haven't been seen in decades. So people may not have, have encountered a crocodile, uh, because they still are quite rare. The vast majority of that 2,000 crocodiles is in Everglades National Park, where okay. you know you don't go, you don't see them unless you go looking for them. Uh, in the residential areas that are you know peripheral to Everglades National Park, uh, we're starting to see some crocodiles now. So, what happens? Give us an example of when you get a call um, about someone sighting a crocodile. Say they live on a canal or mm -hmm. by a waterway. What is the response? What's the first thing you do? Well, most often, uh, I mean, our first response is to is to provide you know educational material to people. Uh, and if, if and that may address their concern, uh, if that, if that doesn't address the concern, then we have a criteria uh, that determines what what kind of action we're going to take. Uh, and in many cases, the crocodile is just passing through. Uh, if it's just a transient animal, then there's not much we can do about it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and depending on the size of the animal, uh, we may go ahead and respond. I have crocodile response agents that are stationed throughout the crocodile's range in Florida that are the ones that actually go out to the people, they make contact with the people, they live, I have uh, three of them here in, in Dade County, in Miami-Dade County. Okay. Uh, they'll go out and make contact with, with the people and try to get a look at the crocodile. Uh, in, in some of those cases, the people never see the crocodile again because it just happened to be passing through. Uh, okay. So there's not anything obviously we can do about that. Uh, if it appears that the crocodile is hanging around, then uh, in, in, in coastal southeast is Florida, which uh, basically is defined as anything east of US-1. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it needs to be nine feet or over for us to attempt to capture and move it. Uh, we call it translocate it, but basically move it to another area okay. away from, away from where, where people live. Uh, if, or, if, or if it's exhibiting egregious behavior that would prevent it from remaining where it's at. And that, uh, you know, and that could be something like approaching people too closely, mm -hmm. uh, not retreating when, when people are near it. Uh, that's something, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but, but we leave that, uh, that potential in there in case we do have an animal that it's, it's exhibiting that kind of behavior. Also, uh, regardless of its size, if it's in somebody's swimming pool, uh, obviously if it's just on the bank, that's not really up in their yard because that's quite normal for, for crocodiles to get out in sun, so they might be up on the bank. Uh, however, if they're into the front yard or if they're roaming around the neighborhood, then obviously we'll respond regardless of how big they are. This recent incident in Coral Gables, um, this crocodile was, I believe, 12 feet in length, and you guys had removed it twice from the area, and it came back. Why do you think that was? Well, it's quite normal for crocodilians to, to return to their capture site. They have a very strong site fidelity and, uh, and the ability to navigate back. They, they have a homing instinct that, that's similar to what migratory birds, okay. birds have. They use uh, any number of cues uh, in order to navigate back. Uh, probably celestial, you know, the Earth's magnetic field. They may use olfactory cues. They may use visual cues. They may recognize the skyline okay. uh, of a particular area. Uh, and, we're, and, and apparently distance is not really a significant factor either. Uh, there are some crocodile species that, that, that where they also have to deal with them as problems, uh, where they've relocated them a significant distance, 100 kilometers or so more. So they really can travel. And they find their way back eventually. Wow. So uh, in most cases, they either return to their capture site or they probably die in the, in the process. Uh, either they die as a result of capture stress uh, after we've released which them. Which is what happened Which is what happened case. with this particular one, although it, it, it died in our possession, and that's happened okay. once before in the last couple of years. 
uh, or, or in, some, in, some, in its attempt to come back to its capture site, something bad happens to it. Well, I know that there's a few really important tips that people should know um, if they do have to coexist uh, peacefully with, with a crocodile, um, especially people living by the waterways here in Florida. What are some of the main tips that you tell people? And that was a good point you just made. Uh, it's, it's not that you, if, if you just happen to know that there are crocodiles, assume that there are. Uh, if you live in southeast Florida. Better uh, to be safe than sorry. There, there, there are going to be crocodiles around. Uh, as I said, uh, the crocodile population is recovering in Florida. and We're seeing crocodiles where they've not been seen in decades. So you have to assume that there, there may be a crocodile around eventually. And the, and the most prudent thing to do is to, is to adapt to that now and take the precautions that you Prepare. need to, just to, be, to be safe around that. And the number one, of course, thing is not to swim where, you, where, you, where crocodiles may occur. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't tell people what to do. That's a recommendation. People, people make their own decisions. Uh, but we're, you know, if, if people didn't get in the water, there's no chance that a crocodile might bite them, right. uh, or very little chance. The most important thing, uh, other than in people's safety, is, to, is, is people's pets. Uh, crocodiles see a, see a dog or a cat as a small mammal. It's not a dog or a cat to them. Uh, it's just another small mammal. They've been it's eating prey. small. It's They're the it's predator prey. and that's it's, it's, their prey. It's a small mammal, things that they've been eating for millions of years. Mm -hmm. So people's pets are at significant risk from crocodiles. And dogs like to go swimming too. Well, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and the dogs like to get in the water and that's where they're really in danger. But they're also in danger at the water's edge. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing possibly with, with, with the dog particularly is they no, have no instinct to be afraid of crocodiles, where a wild animal might learn to be afraid or, or, or have an instinctual fear of another predator. Uh, dogs do not face predation like, like wild animals do. So they're not, they may not be afraid of, they may approach the crocodile. In most cases, uh, these, these, these situations where uh, crocodiles are, are catching people's dogs are almost totally avoidable. Uh, I mean, exactly. uh, and you can't say totally avoidable because things happen sometimes. Uh, people's dogs get out of the yard, uh, you know, they get run over sometimes mm -hmm. because they get out of the yard. Uh, and the same thing could happen with a crocodile as well. I mean, it could just be an accident. But we recommend that people keep their dogs at least 10 feet back from the water's edge and certainly never allow them to swim where there may be crocodiles. Yeah. Uh, and that's virtually everywhere now in South Florida. In fact, you shouldn't, anywhere in Florida probably, you shouldn't let your dog swim because of alligators. Alligators are being much more common. Uh, and they're in virtually every freshwater area you can think of. So you need to be careful anywhere in Florida. Uh, there are some, some places that you know, are maybe a little less risky, but, but if there's a pot potential that there may be a crocodile there, uh, then you need to be really careful about getting your dog in the water. Uh, and we really highly suggest that people who live on the water and have, have dogs fence their backyards. Put a fence Just up. to make sure right. that uh, there's a separation. Build between, a barrier between. Exactly, between right. the crocodile and the alley. I mean, between the crocodile and the dog. And I know people also shouldn't wait to see if there's signs, such as the right. one that you brought here. Um, you know, they shouldn't wait to see one of these. This is just, uh, you should just be aware. If exactly. you live in Florida, if you live by the water, you should exactly. just know. We, we provide these signs to, uh, to managing authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't give them to individuals, obviously. But uh, we will provide these to, to managing authorities, and they'll post them uh, in their neighborhood or at their place of business. These are fairly common in the Keys. Uh, you'll see these around in the Keys because co uh, crocodiles are quite more common down there. But, uh, and that's just a, an advisory to people that there may be crocodiles there. And of course in the reminder. Keys there are many more visitors. Yeah. So it's more important probably to, to let people know if you uh, run a business particularly that, that, that deals with tourists that uh, there, there's a potential that there could be crocodiles around and you know don't let your dog out to the boat ramp to take to get a drink of water right. or to go for a swim because there's a possibility he might not come back. Right. And most of these tragedies that happen with people's pets are, are totally avoidable. People just need to take the precautions to make sure their dogs don't, don't get near the water and the fence is the best way to do that. And that's the good news that it is almost 100% avoidable like you said with uh, the right prevention. And one other point I wanted to make, um, you were talking about how uh, crocodiles have a natural fear of humans. With that, I think one of the main things they tell people is not to ever feed the crocodiles, because um, that will make them keep coming back and uh, sort of lose their fear, so they're not scared to come up to humans, is that right? Yes, very true. Uh, we call it habituation. But, okay. and, and, and that can happen in a se several ways. There's, there's, you know, there's positive reinforcement, which comes from people probably feeding them, or there's just benign association. Uh, in situations where uh, crocodiles are used to seeing people, uh, and there may not be any positive reinforcement, they eventually over time, mm -hmm. 
uh, become accustomed to the people, just like squirrels and raccoons and them. stuff in the park. Okay. Uh, you know, birds in the park will come land on your table. Of course, they may be getting fed too, but <laughs> but uh, just they just get used to the presence of people, and over time. Uh, learn that people aren't a danger to them. So it can happen in, in both those ways. It's certainly uh, worse uh, and can happen faster when people give them a positive reinforcement. Uh, and, and one of the things that uh, is, is really prevalent in, in, in coastal Florida is people cleaning fish in their backyard. Uh, a lot of people who have ocean or, or bay they access, go fishing and then they... they have a fish cleaning station right at their, right okay. their dock in their backyard. They'll clean their fish and throw the fish scraps into the water right there. And, and that positive reinforcement would, could, can potentially uh, make a crocodile approach people. In addition to directly feeding crocodiles, which is illegal, and you will be, will be punished okay. if, if, you're, if you're caught, uh, you'll be punished, uh, and that's fairly serious. But even feeding other wildlife uh, where, where there may be crocodiles around, uh, like feeding the fish, feeding the, the ducks and stuff, that's potential prey for a crocodile. That could still attract them. And that them. could concentrate you know, a prey for an animal and cause him to, to hang around there. Okay. And that's another thing that you need to be cautious of doing uh, in, in, where, there, where there may be crocodiles present. You might not be feeding them directly, but if you're feeding ducks, Inadvert for Inadvertent example. feeding is the same thing to a crocodile. Okay. Wow. Um, Lindsay, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, and if people have questions, if they have a, a nuisance crocodile, um, can you tell us where well, they should call? Uh, one of the things that we provide is this, uh, is this brochure. It's a guide to living with crocodiles. Uh, it's available on our website at myfwc.com slash crocodile. Okay. Uh, it has a lot of common sense safety tips about crocodiles, as well as our phone number. Uh, okay. if, they, if they have other issues or they have to act, actually concerns about a crocodile, then they can contact us and we'll, we'll try to help them. Thank you so much again. Yeah. Remember that you can now watch us on AT&T UVerse Channel 99 and Comcast Channel 77. And don't forget you can also get us on demand at CoralGables.com and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash CoralGables TV. From Coral Gables Television Studios, I'm Brianna Moles. We'll see you next time.